Which is more valuable to an artist, experience or experiments? Now, some of you are going to have an idea in mind at the beginning, and I ask you to just have an open mind while we discuss it and I work on a real-time drawing. But before I do, I want to show you a quick little something I have been doing, which is writing postcards to swing state voters. I've been doing this for a couple months and everything's going in the mail this week. I'm sorry you're all getting so much mail, but I wanted to let you know this because one of you is getting one of my nonpartisan swing state voter postcards. I was shocked to find some name that I knew on the list. Someone who has purchased something from me before. So if you have been one of those people and you live in a swing state, then you might want to actually look at the political mail before you throw it away, because there might be one from me. Anyway, that's all I want to say about that. Let's get on to talking about experience versus experiments. So I'm going to provide a quick apology, which is that I have sped up the footage of this drawing. <laughs> when I recorded the intro, I don't usually do that before doing the drawing, but it was daylight when I did that. And I'm doing this voiceover in the late evening, which means I didn't want to like reshoot that. So uh, this is actually sped up because the drawing took far longer than I was expecting because I put a lot more detail into it. But I'll let you watch that while I talk about the other topic. I'll give you a couple details about the, the supplies here. I'm working in an etched stone paper sketchbook. It means the paper is made from stone, not from wood pulp. So it's got a different surface to it. It's like Yupo, not completely Yupo-ish, but it kind of has that feel to it. And the ink does stay a little bit damp. So you have to make sure you're not leaning on your work until it's completely dry. The pens I'm using are my three Twisby Eco pens. This is the medium. The light lines there were drawn with the extra fine pen. And then I'll also be using the fine. And my goal in this drawing was literally to just replicate a picture. I didn't do anything conceptual here because I wanted to think. I wanted to use my brain for other purposes and just focus on value and shape as well as trying to replicate the rocks with more straight lines in like hatching and cross hatching the plants in more squiggly lines and then try to see if I could get the values to balance out even though I was using completely different kinds of lines and that's where all the time came in because I just kind of kept going at it you'll see it develop as we go but that is the current drawing. Now, the one that inspired me thinking about experience and experiments and the difference between them and like which one would be more important, which one would I recommend people focus on, was this one. This was from a couple days ago in Inktober. The prompt was binoculars. And my crazy drawing got some interesting questions asked you know, like, how did you come up with this? Like, how do you just draw something when there's no picture of it to refer to? Like, how, where does this stuff even come from? Like, a lot of people just kept saying, you're so creative, I will never be that way. I'm just not creative. And I want to not leave all that on the table. Because, unfortunately, a lot of people say those things not realizing what they're doing to their artist's heart. Because we say things out loud and we don't really realize what we're internalizing when we say that. So let me first talk about how I got to this drawing and how experience and experimenting came into play. So I immediately, when I saw the binoculars prompt, I thought, okay, what is everybody else going to draw? And I don't always think about that necessarily. I mean, when I was thinking about the hike prompt, which is what I'm drawing here on the right-hand side, I didn't think about that at all. I just was like, I want to just draw something and it's a place I would like to hike to, so I'm going to call it good. 
absolutely fine to do that. But sometimes I like to go, hmm, I wonder what everybody else is going to do. And I want to not do that. And I figured everybody else would do binoculars on a table. And probably the other alternative would be somebody holding binoculars and looking out at something. And probably the thing you're looking out at in the picture is probably what people really wanted to draw. But they just had to put a person in the picture. That's fine. Uh, but those would probably be the most likely. And I wanted to find something different. So for me, one of my go-tos that I think about when I want to come up with a different look at something, whatever the subject is, I think perspective. Because I'm a perspective junkie. That's my jam. I love that. Well, I have some other jams too. But I love perspective. So I thought, what if the binoculars were on a flat surface like the ground? And that got me thinking, okay, what if I lifted the perspective a little so that I could see the binoculars go back into perspective in the, the rest of the binoculars so you'd see the whole thing. And then I went, wait a minute, why don't I just put a hat over it? I won't have to draw all that stuff and it'll look funny because it'll look like a little person. Wouldn't that be cute? And so I proceeded to go that route. And when I did the binoculars themselves, the glass portion, I entirely knew what I was doing. I didn't have to go find a reference for that glass reflection because literally I know how to draw glass reflections. I have done it repeatedly. I've done it in other mediums. I've done it in markers. I've done it in pencils. I've done it in watercolors. I have painted kettles. I have painted like Christmas ornaments and glasses and eyeglasses and windows and just reflections galore. That experience got brought to the binoculars. So I didn't have to think about that because I've done it enough. I have enough brush and pencil miles and pen miles to bring to the drawing. And all I had to think about was how do I render it in pen? I didn't worry about how somebody else would render it in pen. I didn't go look up to find out how someone would do that. I just brought the experience I already had in the other mediums and said, okay, here's, here's what I'm going to do and just started to work on it. When it came to the little bridge part above the eyeglasses, I did have to go and dig out my binoculars from the garage because I didn't remember what that little part looked like. I knew it had a little little bridge lump in it with little gears and that was about it, all I remembered. So I had to go find that. And then I did look up hats, like bird watching hats, because I wanted to find something that was shaped like what an old man might wear <laughs> when he was out watching birds with his binoculars. But I did change it up. I added some fabric panels to it, etc. And that was a lot of fun, but it was also something I've drawn a gajillion hats. The only reason I looked one up is because I wanted a, a hat with a specific feel to it. So that was more experience brought to this drawing. And then I started on the ground. And originally it was just going to be dirt. I was picturing the binoculars and the hat sitting on a dirt path of some kind. And the dirt went six ways to Sunday bad. Just terrible. It looked so awful. And then I thought, well, okay, I, I want to save this because the rest of it was looking really good. So I said, what if I just turn the grass, turn the dirt into grass, like made grass come out of the dirt. And that just looked like there was a lot of really dark grass at the bottom. <laughs> and so then I said, okay, I guess the grass is going to go dark too. And I had to balance that out with the darks that were in the binoculars etc. But again, you know, light and value, that is another one of my sweet spots. That's another one of the things that I've practiced. So it's also another one of those things that I can not always do in my sleep, but I know how to fix it. I know how to get myself to a place where I'll be happy with it because I've done it enough. And that is the place where I keep telling people drawing a lot making art a lot, coloring a lot, whatever it is you do, do a lot of it. Because the more reps you get, it's like when you go to the gym and you're doing all your reps and eventually that 
machine apparently becomes easier. If I ever went to the gym, I would know that. <laughs> if, if you do your reps, then each exercise gets easier and you can take on more weight and more resistance. So when you do that with your art, you can keep making strides because you're getting your reps in. But if you only make art once every three weeks, you're not getting your reps in. And that means you're not actually going to be making progress as fast as you want because you're going to keep slipping backward to where you were last time instead of moving forward from where you were two days ago. So I know that a lot of people are like, I don't have time to draw every day. But you know, if it was five minutes a day, if that's all it was, it's still going to get you further than not doing any of those reps and just not doing any regular practice. So when it comes to experience, that isn't something that you're going to gain overnight. So if you're new to art or if you're new to a medium, then you're not going to have as much experience as somebody who's been doing it for a long time. But if you are somebody who, say you've been using alcohol markers for years and years and you switch to watercolor and you're like, oh no, everything sucks. You know, like watercolor is hard. I'm just going to tell you that straight up. It's not going to be easy. But there's a lot that you learned about shading and where the, you know, where the light and shadows are, that kind of thing. You've learned a lot of that when you were using your markers. You just need to learn the techniques then to apply it to watercolor. Think about the poor person who started with watercolor and they didn't get the shadow, shadow experience that you did. They didn't get the light and shadow concept down. So they're getting that along with the technique. You are light years ahead because you at least have some other instruction under your belt. But your experience is going to be different than anybody else's. And when, wherever you are on the art spectrum is going to make a big difference in how much experience you have. So I, I just want you to know that experience comes in time, but not just the amount of years there are between you and the day you were born. It's the amount of art that you create in those days and how recent that experience was. Because if your experience is, you know, 15 years old, then yes, you need to kind of go back and relearn a lot of that. And that's okay. It's okay to be in that spot. I know a lot of my audience is my age and older. And I just want to speak to you all for just a moment because I just want to say that you are completely capable of learning new things. And I don't want you to ever think that you're not. My own mom graduated from college with an art degree when she was 71. And she made art until a year before she passed. Like when she was 93, she was still making art and winning prizes for contests. Like she was amazing. And you too can keep learning. So don't let age be your excuse. But uh, we've talked about experience a lot. Let's talk about experimenting and where that, that plays in. Because even though experience is going to take a long time to get you anywhere because you need all those brush miles or pen miles or marker miles or whatever. But the experimenting is something anybody can do at any stage because you can just try stuff. Like if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Like big deal. It's just a piece of paper. It's like you can go buy another one. They keep making more. <laughs> but experiments can be more informed when they're paired with experience because then you already have some knowledge of what might happen. But some of the best experiments might happen when you don't know anything. So it can play both ways. Uh, a number of years ago, I created a piece, and fortunately I got it on video because it was really beautiful. I did a piece of alcohol ink art. And I'm not talking alcohol marker art. I'm talking like the squeeze the ink out of the bottle and use the alcohol and make it all beautiful and blowy and all that. So I'd created this thing on Yupo paper, and then my colored pencils were sitting next to me. I had just finished another project or something. I don't remember why they were there, but they were out. And I looked at them, and I looked at this piece of art in front of me, 
because I was going to be doing some pen and ink doodle on it. And I looked at the pencils and in a split second, my experience told me that I have used colored pencils on top of alcohol marker ink on other papers. And it worked great. And here I was using alcohol inks, which are related to alcohol marker inks, looking at that on that paper and thinking, I wonder if colored pencils will work. Now, it was very possible it wouldn't. The paper could have had a huge effect. And in all reality, the pencils didn't want to work when it wasn't on top of the ink. But on top of the ink on the paper, that put enough barrier there that the pencils worked great. The art piece was very different and very unique. And I've been thinking I want to get back and try that technique again. So I'll probably do that later here in Inktober. But the two of them together is not anything I've ever seen anybody else do. I still haven't seen anybody try it since I did, but I'm going to have to do it again myself since nobody else took it on. <laughs> but like my experience level in a split second was able to tell me to try a colored pencil on it. And I've seen lots of people ask the question when they see an artist post something and they're like, boy, would that work on this medium? Would that work on this paper? What if I tried it with that? What do you think will happen? And if you've ever asked me that question, hopefully the answer you got back from me was, I don't know, go try it. Because even though I could make an educated guess about what might happen in that circumstance you're asking about, then if I were to tell you, then I would be stealing from you the joy of finding that out for yourself. So I try not to answer that with, uh, I think that'll work, or no, try this instead. Sometimes I'll do that if it just seems like it'll be a great waste of expensive art supplies. But if it's just, you know, markers and paper, I'm probably not going to tell you much because I want you to experiment. And if you've gotten that answer from me and you still haven't experimented, now you know what you're doing for the next couple days. You're going to go back and you're going to try that, whatever that thing was. Because I want you to have that experience of that eye-opening moment. For me, the sweetest spot in my art, the moment when I just get so fired up, is when my experience, my knowledge of something, that I, I just have enough to be dangerous. Sometimes that's all I have. But my knowledge of something meets up with an experiment. When my knowledge of that alcohol ink on that paper meets up with the pencils and I decided to try one and it just it was stunning well you know sometimes that's the moment that's going to keep you going back into your studio over and over and over again because you want that moment again and that's the moment that I often am striving for I want to find that unique thing I want to find that different thing that thing that nobody else is doing. Now, it makes my artwork rather inconsistent because <laughs> I'm using so many mediums and so many different things all the time. And that might not be good for me as, <laughs> as an art career, but it keeps me super interested in what I'm doing and makes me really happy when it works, when it all comes together. So even if you're not somebody who has experience to bring all that together, you can still do the experimenting part. And if you're a note taker, then as a new artist, take lots of notes and write down what you tried and what order you put it on the paper so that you can replicate that again and try it again. And if you come up with any of those ideas, if you're the person who's always asking an artist, well, what if I did this? What do you think would happen? Then I want you to start celebrating that you knew enough to ask that question. Because that means you know enough to ask the question. You have more knowledge, maybe, than you think you do. Even though you see somebody else who you're sure they have much more experience than you do, if you're even asking those questions, that's a good place to be. Because it's really going to help you move forward. Now, when it comes time to deciding on what 
what you're going to draw and are you going to make it unique? And I use the word unique rather than creative because, you know, just doing a, any kind of a drawing. I mean, I consider this drawing I'm doing to be creative, even if it's just playing with lines and, and making kind of a scratchy drawing on a piece of paper. It still feels creative, but it's not a unique interpretation. It's not a waterfall as no one has ever seen it before. It's, it's not that exciting, but it's a nice waterfall. And I'm starting to get the buildup of the textures and that sort of thing in both the rocks and in the plants. And the white of the water is coming out. I mean, that was my goal in this. I'm totally cool with what it's doing. And then I looked at the bottom and I went, oh crud, I still have more rocks to go. <laughs> Yeah, we all get a little tired of the work, but it, it's okay. I did continue and finish the drawing. But like not every work is going to be rocket science, but if you want to at some point decide, okay, this one, I want to see if I can come up with something different. Here's a few things you might ask yourself. First, look at the word, whatever the word is for the prompt. Is there another meaning for the word? Is there something else that it's been used in? Is there a movie title that, you know, that goes with it? Is there a, a book title? Um, is there something, you know, something else that it makes you think of? And how, do, how might that work its way into a drawing? Or you could think of breaking the word up into bits using, you know, using a dash in between two halves of the word, does that give it a new meaning? Or is there a way of representing the object itself instead of the normal view of most everything that we have pictures of in our mind, that we see on TV and in movies and just in life around us, everything's at eye level, human eye level. But the, um, the other perspectives that you could take on would be, what happens if I look at this thing from a third floor window and look down at it? Or what happens if I'm looking from my dog's perspective down low? What does that do to the drawing? You might need to do some research to find out, you know, if somebody else has taken a photo at that angle of that object that you can start to work with, but it can give you a different perspective on how to show it that will be unique, that'll be different not just the same way everybody else is drawing the same object. And some of that is going to take some study in perspective. But it, you know, if you're somebody who can replicate from a photo, you might be able to find a picture showing that object in a different way than, than just straight on. But if you are really learning to draw, then starting by drawing straight on is your best bet because you want something very simple that you can feel successful at. So don't take on anything that's so far beyond where your skills are at that it starts to make you sad. If that happens, you're doing it wrong. You need to be uh, making art that makes you happy, that, that you enjoy doing. But you also need to find the places where you can challenge yourself. Find the places where you can bring your experience you know, when, when you start drawing things at a normal side angle, like everything's sitting on a table, then a, as time goes on, that will become easier. Just like, you know, when you get those reps at the gym, things will become easier when you're drawing as well. And then that becomes your experience to lean on. That becomes those first things that you can put in your tool belt that will be what you can rely on as you start growing as an artist, as you start developing, as you start learning more. And if there are things that you want to draw, you want to learn how to draw a particular thing, you wanna like draw Christmas ornaments, for instance, like that's your thing, you want to be able to just sit down and draw a Christmas ornament from memory, then draw Christmas ornaments every day for a month. Like if that's, if that's your goal, then really focus on it. If you want to draw people, then it'll take longer than a month. I'm going to tell you that. I've been trying that for years. Um, but just set a goal and decide. I'm, every time I sit down to draw, I want to draw that thing because that's what I want to get better at. 
and hopefully that will start moving you over time closer and closer. Just know that it's all going to stink for a while. Like I have drawn a lot of really bad out of proportion people. A lot of us have, and it's okay because it's all practice. It's all reps. And we want to make sure that we get in our reps and get past them so that we can get to the fun stuff. So this drawing is very close to finished. I was pretty happy with it overall. Uh, you can see there's a lot more linear work in the rocks on the left, a lot more open space and that sort of thing on the right hand side. Didn't get all the plants exactly where they were in the picture and that kind of thing, but a lot of you know, light and dark going on, which worked fairly well. Overhead light does not do this paper much justice. It's slightly shiny paper, but uh, yeah, this is a little bit better view of it. So you can see those lights and darks. And I was just adding a few more rocks into the distant water there. So that is the drawing. And I did promise you I was going to show you my other pieces so far for Inktober. So let's take a look through the rest of the sketchbook. And the sketchbook and the pens are linked in the doobly-doo in the supply list. So this is the 1st of October. It was backpack for the day and I listed all the things I would put in my mental backpack, but I forgot to put patience. Instead, I put embracing imperfection and smudged it because the ink hadn't dried. So I think I should have packed some patience in here. So isn't that appropriate? Imperfection being smudged, yay. Uh, second day was discover, and I broke the word into two halves, dis and cover. Uh, so it's discover, not that one. So I did a manhole cover, get it? Well, the perspective is insanely bad here. Insanely bad. Uh, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was clearly not thinking. I added the bricks separately from the manhole cover, and I don't know, I was working at an angle. I have a million excuses, but this is going to be an example of what not to do in my drawing book that I'm going to be working on. If you want more information on the drawing book, then go to my Patreon page, link in the doobly-doo to the post that you can read for free. You don't have to be a member. You can decide if you're interested in following along with that crazy journey for the next year or two or however long it takes. The boots were next and I lowered the perspective again to like down where my dog's nose is and put it down by the toes and that brought the horizon line down in the back so I could get a really interesting perspective on a pair of hiking boots. Next up is exotic. And I knew most people were going to be doing exotic cats, that sort of thing. And I decided to do exotic flowers and I did amaryllis and had some fun with the lines here. And I also did a short and that short will show you how to do the dark centers and some of the darker petals in the back flowers. And of course, here is our lovely binoculars and the craziness. So you can see it now after my crazy stories about what I went through. Um, you can almost see all that dark dirt that I had put at the bottom and how it has eventually turned itself into grass that is all of a, a better uh, color together. And those wonderful reflections in the binoculars, just a lot of things I love about this. And I want to explore more in another piece of art at some time. And that's always a good thing to do with stuff in your sketchbook. Don't let it just stay there. If it was a good idea, do more. This one was Trek for the prompt. And while the, all of the prompts are about hiking and adventure, I went with Star Trek. This is a location where a bunch of different quote unquote planets were. Uh, it's a little place outside of LA. Next was Passport. And I went for the places you go as opposed to the book itself. Because the stamps are only so much fun, but it's all about the places you'll go. And of course, we have our final hike prompt. And of course, the rest of the month is going to continue with many more drawings. And hopefully at the end of the month, I'll remember to do a sketchbook tour so you can see what else I made. On this coming Saturday, we're gonna have an open studio and you're welcome to come, work on your pen and ink stuff, work on Christmas cards, whatever you want. It's over at Art Venture, we'll be on Zoom, it's free. Come RSVP, link in the doobly-doo for everything. And I will see you again very soon. Take care, bye-bye.